name is Ben Cohen, and I've been doing A Course in Miracles for about three and a half years. Okay. And how long have you been part of this community? Almost three years. So it was not too long after I started the course that I became part of the community. Okay. And in a, in a succinct sentence, uh, what brought you to this community? <laughs> Succinctly, prayer. <laughs> I prayed for a place to practice the course and be with people who had done it before and do a series of steps that led me here. Okay. And I guess the, the biggest question is what have you derived from living in this community? How is it helpful for you? <laughs> uh, well, like I said, it's the answer to my prayers. Uh, and every time I think that I could do it a better way or find something somewhere else, there's somewhere something inside of me just knows that's not true. I mean, I know it was prayer that brought me here. I know that I've had so many miraculous experiences since I've been here. Uh, well, been part of the community, because the community is all around the world. So, yeah, it's like I just need to remember all those experiences, and it's like from that, I have no other option. Which is great, you know. <laughs> I, I love the, I love the awakening process. Sometimes. <laughs> and what happens when you are having a day that you feel perhaps you should go somewhere else? You know, when you're having a struggle come up. Ultimately, mm, the way out is to join, and that's probably the biggest reason to live in this community, any community, but this seems to be the path for me uh, because it's very easy when stuff comes up resistance doubt thoughts uh, anything it's very easy to start to spin out so to be around people who are willing to join me in the truth and won't necessarily say oh poor Ben it's all right or you know join me in false empathy instead they just hold the truth it creates a space, a very safe space for me to just express everything that's coming up, no matter what it is, no matter how shameful I think it might be, or, I mean, there's been times where I thought, if I say what I really want to say, I'm going to get booted out of the community. There's no way I'll be able to stay and say what I want to say, but that's just not the case. It's such a safe, loving environment, and it's made for that. It's made to allow space for things to come up, to express it, to join with people who have gone through it and who will hold the space and the truth. And that's really the only way out. I mean, I had things coming up this morning and I knew I just had to join or it would have started to spin out. And I did that, I went and joined with Lila and it was beautiful because she was talking, it was like I was talking to myself. She had either gone through the same things or in this case she was going through them like right before I had this very same week. Mm -hmm. So to be able to join with others and to have that reflection really is a great way to remember that, that I'm not alone. I won't get dropped on my head. The spirit is always there for me and it, it just allows the stepping through. It's like uh, if I had had to do an interview this morning, I would not have done it. <laughs> I would not have been smiling. Yeah, it just would have been a whole different mindset. But being able to join and express is really the key. And do you have a specific person that you're assigned? Like, is Lila your person to express with or join with? Or do you use your intuition and go to whoever it feels right to you? Yes, I do have a specific link, is what we call it. So I've been here almost three years, so my link changes depending upon ultimately the guidance but it seems to be where I'm at also influences that but right now my link is Lila so if stuff comes up she's the one really that is available for me but there are others available like right now Carrie is the steward so really I can go to her first and we can join and do the same thing but ultimately if I really feel like I need to go deeper or I need more time then Lila is the one right now for so I hear people talk about things being up for the healing. What does it mean to you when something is up for the healing? When I think of the expression up for the healing, I 
feel like circumstances and form are happening for me to see where I might be upset, where I might bite on the circumstances. So, an example. Well, let's just go with the one I had this morning. <laughs> I've been looking a lot lately at the idea that I'm not in control of anything, because I've believed for so long that I've been in control, whether it be my job, how I make money, where I live, pretty much everything that I consider my life, I've thought I've had control over. And lately it's just been, I've been seeing a lot where even that idea that I have control can be a reason for pain or it can be something that can be up for the healing. So when I'm given an area, like right now one of my areas is to keep the fire going in the main house here. And it seems to change. Like the first day I was given the area, I got a set of directions in the morning, and then I got a set of directions in the evening, and they were different. And then the next morning I got another set of directions. The next evening I got another set. So in three days I've had like six different sets of instructions on, on how to uh, look at this area. And when that happens, it's just like, it's like I have no control here. Like, just give it to me straight. Just tell me how to do it, be done with it, and let me go on with my day. But it's like that's not really what the tasks or the projects are for. It's really just to see the thoughts that come up. So it, even though I wouldn't have looked at it as being perfectly orchestrated by having the directions change, the fact of the matter is it was perfectly orchestrated. It was so that uh, I could look at my idea of control. So in that instance, that was up for the healing for me because I wasn't in control. There was no way I could be in control. In fact, the thought even that somehow if I could just have a clear set of directions I'd be happy. I could even see where that wasn't true because if it wasn't the wood it would have been some other area where I would have gotten the opportunity to see that I really want to be in control. I really want to like play God basically. I want to be able to move the pieces on the board the way I want them. I want to be able to set up what I do with my day the way I want. I basically want to have some semblance of control. So when things happen seemingly in form and I am not happy about it or I'm not peaceful or I have any type of upset in the mind, that's when we say it's up for the healing. So in this particular instance, one of the aspects of it happened to be the thought of wanting control that was up for healing. looking back or looking at yourself now, I guess, what do you see? What's changed? Everything. <laughs> um, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is just how aware I am of the thoughts that are going on. So there's this idea uh, that of mind training, right? And so when I would think about that, what I think about is First, just becoming aware. Becoming aware of the thoughts that are going on. Because I can see now where for most of my life, I've pretty much just been on autopilot or cruise control. So if the mind, to use an analogy, if the mind is a car, okay, for most of my life, I've just had the car on cruise control. And I haven't really been thinking about how the car is driven, where I decide to go or how I decided to drive it. In fact, it wasn't even really until I started doing the mind training that I realized that there was even anyone driving the car. Like I always thought I, Ben, was in control. When really, after being here for three years, what I'm seeing is that I haven't, I don't quite believe this yet, but really there is no I, there is no Ben. But there is something driving the mind there's something driving the thoughts in the mind. So the very first thing I had to realize was that there was something driving the thoughts to go on in the mind. So it was like I had to see that the mind was on cruise control. So then I had to take the mind off cruise control, which means basically the willingness to be aware of the thoughts in the mind all the time, including when I think I'm asleep 
I can even do that. It's like before I used to think when I, I think I'm asleep at night that I'm dreaming, that I have no control whatsoever. But I'm actually seeing that I can even be aware of the thoughts in the mind when I'm asleep. So first I had to become aware that the thoughts can be looked at. So not everything has to come from the unconscious. So once I can start to do that, then I can start to see the choices that I'm making in what I choose to think. So it's like, take the mind off cruise control. So now I have to make the choice of whether to turn left or turn right. Or to put it another way, I have to choose the driver that I want to drive the car when it turns left or turns right. So the words we would use a lot are ego and Holy Spirit. So for most of my life, the ego has been the driver and I haven't really been aware of that. But now what's happened is, whether it's brushing my teeth, uh, going to eat a meal, doing a task like building a fire or working on the computer or whatever seems to be in form that this body seems to be doing, the mind is always thinking. So the question I have to ask myself is, what is the mind thinking? And am I peaceful, really? Because that's what it boils down to. That's what I want most, is peace and happiness. And I can see where, until I came to this community and until I started doing the mind training, even the moments where I thought I was happy, I really wasn't even happy. There was always some lingering upset in the mind. Like, uh, like, I basically came down to three times in my life where I really, really thought I was happy. I thought, okay, if I have to define happiness, here's my top three. But when I sat there and looked at it, it was like, but wait a sec, this was going on, and this was going on, and this was going on. So it's like, I wasn't even really happy. So now that I've been here, it's like, okay, let me look at all those upsets. Let me not gloss over some of them and just say, oh, I'm happy now. Let me see, oh, I'm brushing my teeth and I'm, my chest is really tight and I'm holding my breath and I'm afraid that someone's going to tell me that I'm brushing my teeth wrong. It's like, because there's this constant, when the ego is driving the car, there's this constant thought stream that I'm doing everything wrong and I'm totally guilty and it's just a matter of time before someone comes in and tells me just how guilty I am. Yeah, I've gotten by maybe, you know, maybe I put up a good act and no one's really caught on to just how bad a guy I really am or just how guilty I really am, but it's gonna happen at some point or another. So it's like seeing that constant thought system that's driving the mind and driving really all the decisions. It's like there's an idea, two, the two main guidelines about living in this community are no private thoughts and no people pleasing. It's like when I am giving into that thought system that I'm always wrong and I'm always guilty, then I need to do something to alleviate that guilt. And one of the ways in which I think I can do that is to people please. Oh, if the person who gives me a task to do, if I can just do it a great job if I can make them really happy with the way I've done this task and they're totally pleased with me then maybe they won't be the ones that you know throw the gavel down and say oh but you're so guilty you're such a piece of crap and it's like so I get the opportunity to see that when I'm doing the mind training when I'm part of this community and in saying these things to people even saying I think I'm a piece of crap I think I'm brushing my teeth wrong, I think I'm eating wrong, I think I'm doing everything wrong, that's where the no private thoughts comes in. It's like as long as I'm unwilling to speak them and express them, then I'm giving them power. I'm giving them the power to drive the mind, to be behind the wheel and continually beat me down for being guilty. So if I'm willing to speak them out loud and I'm around people in this community that hold the truth, then I can see just how insane the thoughts are. It's like the other day I was doing commentary. We were showing a movie and commentary was coming through. And the last few times I'd done it, I was just totally in my joy. It was like, the first few times I did it, I was terrified. I was like, oh, there's no way I can do this. I'm gonna say the wrong thing. I can't stop the movie, all this stuff. But the last few times I realized that 
There was no fun in that. I was having no joy whatsoever. So I was able to see the thoughts in the mind. I was able to express them out loud. And I was able to make another choice. Well, then it's like the thoughts came back and I didn't even realize it until it happened. I saw a couple people walk in the room and I thought, oh, well, they've done more mind training than me. They know better than me. So now all of a sudden the same thoughts came back. I won't know what to say. I'll say the wrong thing. I'll stop it at the wrong point. All this stuff. To the point where I was not in my joy again. I even just wanted to totally stop the movie and go to bed because I was not having any fun whatsoever. But it was funny because the very next day I would have different people walk up and say how much they really enjoyed the movie and they really enjoyed the commentary. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, that's not the experience I was having. I was totally miserable. And I thought everyone else in the room was miserable, too. So you didn't stop it right then. You kind of, you kept that thought system, and it was only until the next morning that it was... Exactly. I could have stopped it then. Right, but you could have. That's really probably the golden opportunity about being in this community. It's not about getting anything done. It's not about doing anything informed. It would have been totally welcomed for me to stop the movie and talk about just how miserable I was and how I thought everyone in the room thought I was doing a terrible job. But I was choosing, basically, to be miserable. And to keep your pride thought. And to keep my pride mm -hmm. and to keep all the things that were associated with the reasons why I wouldn't want to just stop. Like, I could be wrong for stopping the movie and saying I'm miserable. But the funny thing about that was, is even though I chose to wait until the next day instead of doing it in the moment, it's still an opportunity to bring it up to the healing. I still, the next day, expressed all these things that I'm talking about now, how I thought that someone knew better than me, how I thought it was just a matter of time before one of those two people said, okay, stop it all, give me the remote, you're done, right? And so to see that the scenario that was playing out in my mind, what I believe to be my mind, was so completely different than the scenario that seemed to be going on in other people's minds. It's like that's where the power of no private thoughts is. By speaking it and getting it out there and then seeing that that wasn't even the... Well, reality is kind of a weird word because it's like, what is reality? But it's like to see that the experience that I was having was not the same experience that others were having and not the experience that I thought they were having, it's like, then it loses its power. Then I can step back up and say, how insane is that really? I'm beating myself up over and over and over until I'm completely out of my joy. And it was for no reason at all. Everyone else was loving it. <laughs> it's like, so that's the beautiful thing about expressing and not keeping them private. They don't have power. They can't have power over me when I choose not to let and when someone else is expressing, if they're having a situation happen and they're expressing to you, what do you do? What are you doing at that moment? Yeah, well, it's, it's really no different. I'm watching my mind. So if someone seems to be expressing to me or with me, I'm watching my mind. What am I thinking right now? Am I totally at peace or am I upset? If it seems to be they're saying something about me, am I thinking that that's true, that that's real, and I need to defend myself? Oh, but, but let me tell you why it's this way. Let me tell you why I am the way I am, and basically trying to defend who I am. So it's like, it's no different whether I seem to be expressing or whether someone else seems to be expressing. It's like, what am I believing in that moment? And, yeah, it's like, there's this idea of biting. Am I going to bite on it? If someone says to me, oh, you make me so angry when you say this, or I feel like you do this to me, or whatever it happens to be, I have the choice to, quote, bite on that, which is to think that that's actually true, that I could hurt someone, that I could mistreat someone that I could do anything to take away anyone's happiness or take away anyone's innocence, including myself. And it's like, when I bite, that's exactly what I'm doing. But when I don't, I'm remembering the truth for myself 
and I'm remembering the truth for the person who's expressing. And the beautiful thing about that is, is then they can say anything. They can say anything and everything they want to say and feel totally safe in doing so. And know that there'll be no repercussions. That I'm not going to do something to retaliate or anything like that. And yet, doesn't it hurt if someone is expressing something and it's about you and it's against you and it seems to be an attack upon you? Now, doesn't it feel like they're hurting you? Or when you're saying something about someone else, um, you know, how, how are you? How do you know that it isn't hurting them? How do you know that it cannot hurt them? It takes a lot of trust. Really, trust is the key. Because it is very easy for me to choose to be hurt when someone seems to be saying something about me. Or for me to watch my words when I seem to be saying something about someone else. I mean, that's, that's a form of people pleasing, basically. And that's also a way of keeping thoughts private. If I don't really say what I'm feeling to say, then I'm really keeping some things private. And that's, that is one of the greatest benefits of being in this community, is having the opportunity to say what I need to say about anyone and trust that I can do that. And anyone else can say what they need to say about me. And that's where the healing also comes in. So it is very easy for me to, to bite on what someone says about me. I mean, that's, that's the way of the ego. That's what keeps the personality alive. That's what keeps me thinking I'm separate from this person who seems to be expressing. I mean, it's, it's everything right there. So it's like, it takes a lot of trust. It's like, what if I'm wrong? What if that's not really who I am? Or what if that's not really who they are? What if that's some character that I'm choosing to play out or some character that they're choosing to play out? And it really means nothing. I'm just choosing to let it mean something and then I'm choosing to play out the script. Okay, well this character is supposed to say I hate you. So my next line is supposed to be, well I hate you too. It's like, what if I didn't play my part? What if I didn't read from the ego script? What if I chose to say, you know, what if I'm wrong about God? What if God doesn't hate me? What if God loves me and loves this person? then how would I need to act when this person is saying they hate me? Why would I do anything but love that person? Sounds like it goes back to what would Jesus do? <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. You know, I'm still taking the hit when people say things against me. What do I need to do when someone is saying something that certainly feels to me like it's against me? First thing that comes to mind is express. It doesn't seem to do any good to just deny what we believe to be true. So if someone seems to say something about you and you have a feeling about it, it doesn't do any good to just not speak or to just deny it. It's like there has to be an experience of trust. It's not just a matter of saying, God loves me, I'm innocent, and they're innocent, and that's it. Because if I bite on it, then I don't truly believe that. So how can I let go of that belief? The only way I can let go of that belief is to express, to let all these thoughts come up. So I feel like that's really important, is to know this is a safe space. You can say whatever you need to say. You can let come up whatever needs to come up because we're all here for the same purpose. We're all here to heal those thoughts. We're not here to use them against each other. We're not here to prove that someone's guilty and others aren't. We're really here because we want the peace of God, ultimately. So this sounds a lot like, I mean, in the world, it, you might express something to me. I would have feelings. I would express something back. and. In the world that we're used to living in, let's say, outside this community, we know that can get ugly and doesn't necessarily take us to God. So why is this taking us somewhere different? What is different in the process? I feel like that's what goes back to the idea of community. Because 
if there's two people that are both expressing and they're both biting, so to speak, or they're both playing their character, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, then it's very helpful to have a third come in or a fourth, fifth, and sixth, however many, you know. But there's this idea that we talk about in the community of having a third. It's very helpful then to have someone who may not have the same attachments. So they can be kind of like that impartial witness. So that when there seems to be a butting of heads, there is someone really holding the space for the intention. Why are these two people or these two characters even expressing to begin with? That third can really hold the space for why they're doing it. Again, it's not to prove that someone's right and someone's wrong, or someone's guilty and someone's innocent. It's to really allow the space so everything can come up, so we can have the experience that everyone is innocent and no one's guilty. And I guess that's the moment where we, where we lift it up or give it to the Holy Spirit. Is that the difference? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's true. And what is lifting it up? When I think of lifting it up, I think of the willingness to be wrong. Because it's in believing that I'm right about whatever. I'm right about who God is, I'm right about who I am, I'm right about who this person is that I seem to be talking to. Whatever it is that, that I think I'm right about that's causing the upset. If I just have the little bit of willingness to say, what if I'm wrong about any of these things? That's what I think of when I think of lifting it up. Because then I'm basically saying, okay, ego, I'm tired of you driving the car now. I'm going to test drive another driver here called Holy Spirit. Okay, so I'm going to lift this up, this fact that, like, this car seems to be a piece of crap. I'm going to lift this up, and I'm going to give it to another driver. And I'm going to be willing to say, okay, maybe this driver has something to say that is actually what I want and can actually be true. So maybe I'm not this piece of crap that I think I am. Maybe this person I'm talking to isn't this piece of crap that I think they are. Maybe I'm wrong about all these things. And it's like, it's like this open door for the driver to come in and say, okay, let me drive you to the paradise you're really looking for, instead of continuing to drive to the dump. <laughs>